on the facts and circumstances that had come out during the investigation, they warranted the murder charge. She was in fear of her life. She felt that she needed to pull that gun to defend herself. Well, police call it murder, but the woman charged in the crime calls it self-defense. Well, tonight, 21-year-old Hannah Payne is behind bars. Clayton County detectives say she crossed the line when she confronted a hit-and-run driver with her gun, and he ended up dead. Well, Fox 5's Jacqueline Schultz joins us live from Clayton County. Jacqueline, Payne's attorney is disputing the police version of events? Yeah, she's describing, as she's being described tonight, as a woman who needed to defend herself from a violent man during the encounter. But police tonight are saying in the press conference that she was the aggressor here and why she ultimately was responsible for the shooting death of a 62-year-old man. Hannah Payne charged with murder without malice. 21-year-old Hannah Payne seemed to have tears in her eyes as she appeared in court for a charge of murder. Clayton investigators say Payne went too far when she drove after a car involved in a hit and run and confronted the getaway driver. 62-year-old Kenneth Herring shot dead. Based on the facts and circumstances that had come out during the investigation, they warranted the murder charge. The information I've received is that she was trying to get him to return to the scene. Tuesday evening, Clayton police explained why Payne should be behind bars. Detective say Payne witnessed a hit and run near Clark Howell Highway and Highway 85 when the 62 year old hit a car and fled. They say Payne, a stranger, did call 911 and followed Herring for a mile to the corner of Riverdale Road and Forest Parkway, where she allegedly used her Jeep to block him in. Investigators say she got out of her car, had her gun, and confronted him. And during an argument and a struggle, her gun was discharged and Herring was shot and killed. It just seems like it's an unfortunate situation of a good Samaritan trying to stop a person on a hit and run. She was in fear of her life. She felt that she needed to pull that gun to defend herself. Defense counsel Matt Tucker disputes the police version of events and argues that Herring turned violent during the encounter. Clayton investigators say they're still investigating her version. It's my contention that it was a struggle that ensued and that's his part of pulling her into the vehicle and grabbing on her and, and making comments to her. She had a ripped shirt, she had scratch marks on her, she had a mark on her face. Um, there should be handprints of his and hers on the gun.